The Blind Eternities, a place of unbounded potential where countless planes demonstrate the beauty and danger of magic, where nature and artifice live in harmony or at odds, where powerful beings known as planeswalkers travel the space between realms and discover long lost lands. Faerun, where countless adventures await the party brave enough to surmount them, where magic and monsters lurk behind each corner, where beings from other planes materialize to protect or destroy where the metropolis of Baldur's Gate stands illustrious along the Sea of Swords. These two universes, Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons, so long separated and beyond each other's reach, will once more collide June 10th with the Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. Such a monumental collision stirs imagination and elicits questions from the most creative and discerning players. What exactly is Baldur's Gate, and what can I find within? What's the multiverse and who are Planeswalkers? How do these two vastly different games, each with their own rich stories, achieve harmony? Hey lore lovers, my name's Eric and welcome to the Lord Brains YouTube channel, where we share the lore and stories behind many fantasy settings to strengthen the connection between people and their passions. The upcoming release of Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate marks the second foray of Magic the Gathering into the lands of the Forgotten Realms. With this crossover, D&D veterans and MTG enthusiasts will be introduced to each other's universe, a harrowing and disorienting journey for any. In this video, we'll attempt to ease the crossover with a small introduction to the D&D universe, the Forgotten Realms, and Baldur's Gate. We'll tackle the overall lore of the lands, how it's represented in the cards of the set, and the comparison between the two IPs. In this way, we'll hope to orient Magic players to the faraway lands of the Forgotten Realms, and also help align dungeon masters new to MTG's multiverse. But before we begin, I want to give a huge thanks to all of my supporters over on Patreon. Their patronage means the world to me and helps the channel grow and improve. Alright, time to grab our d20s and brave the Sword Coast. Let's dive in. The city of Baldur's Gate is one filled with untold rewards precariously surrounded by dangerous failure, a location where tantalizing opportunities present themselves, but where one minor slip could spell disaster or death for an adventurer. Before we discuss the city, its inhabitants, and its immediate environs, we must first widen our lens to understand the greater universe that surrounds it and how the lands of D&D connect to those of Magic the Gathering. Dungeons and Dragons is an incredibly popular fantasy role-playing game that has storytelling at its core. Players create and assume the role of unique characters, developing their story from the ground up by establishing deep backgrounds, character personalities, virtues and vices to breathe life into their adventurer. They then gather with others to form a party that travels through dangerous dungeons, explores realms unknown, and seeks untold riches. MTG is a collectible and strategic trading card game in which players assume the role of a powerful planeswalker and use the mystical knowledge gained on their travels, represented by the deck they create, to do battle with other players. While the ultimate creative expression comes from the formation of the character and the world building of the adventure in D&D, MTG players demonstrate their flair for ingenuity in the decks they create. Tens of thousands of cards offer limitless potential for deck crafting and expressive creativity. To marry the creative ideas of each, the Commander Baldur's Gate set includes cards with the new background mechanic. Here, a commander is paired with a legendary enchantment to create a compelling narrative for the commander and offers countless opportunities for individual expression. The flavor texts of several give a glimpse into the character creation of D&D. For instance, Candlekeep Sage reads, You love the smell of dusty tomes, the flicker of candles during late night reading, and the old texts that bring to life the scholars who have come before. While the background criminal past highlights a grim backstory and reads, You've never cared much for laws or authority, especially when they get in your way. These enchantment cards allow players to create their own MTG adventurer in a fashion similar to D&D. Although players have control over their destinies and can use any real or fictional location as the center of their adventures while playing D&D, Dungeons & Dragons offers many settings developed through years of companion rules books, fantasy novels, and accompanying video game series for players to explore. The setting for the upcoming Commander Legends set is the notorious Baldur's Gate, made famous from various video games and novel series. But the city of Baldur's Gate is itself within a greater fantasy setting, the multiverse known as the Forgotten Realms. 
Akin to the multiverse of Magic the Gathering, the Forgotten Realms holds countless different planes and realms of existence, suspended within and separated from another by the ethereal phlogiston. This concept is mirrored in the blind eternities of MTG, the unfathomable and bizarre space between planes through which only a select few can travel. The most notable plane in the Forgotten Realms is called the Prime Material Plane, which acts as a keystone location and connects to various other planes within the multiverse. Creatures, elemental energies, and magical forces penetrate the Prime Material Plane from other worlds and other planes of existence. This overlapping interconnectedness forms the foundation of cosmology, religious worship, science, and exploration as the inhabitants of the Prime Material seek to understand the planes that exist beyond their own. The Prime Material Plane can be likened to the Plane of Dominaria in MTG, the nexus of the multiverse and plane in which many of Magic's earliest sets took place. It's here that iconic characters travel through the most well-known locations and carry out legendary adventures. The world of Toril resides within the Prime Material Plane and is itself composed of several oceans, continents, islands, and seas. One of the most widely explored and well-known is the massive continent of Faerun, where several notable Forgotten Realms heroic adventures unfold. Faerun's geography is dominated by an inland and irregularly shaped body of water known as the Sea of Fallen Stars that divides the continent into several geopolitical regions. Our focus will be directed towards the western region. Western Faerun is dominated by the Sea of Swords, whose foaming surf carves the coastline from north to south. The sea and the sword coast are ripe with danger as benthic monsters rise from their depths to prey upon unsuspecting vessels, and bandits patrol the roadways between villages. But at the southernmost end of the Sword Coast, within a secluded and naturally protective harbor, the domineering city of Baldur's Gate stands as a beacon of adventure and commerce, a salve for the weary traveler, and a place for respite and rearmament for the daring. What originally began as a modest port town founded by the swashbuckling explorer Baldurin long ago has since grown into a bustling harbor of endless activity where commerce and coin flow easily. The city is stewarded by the Council of Four grand dukes that deliberate on how best to rule. The cards cut a deal and the Council of Four highlight these significant statesmen. As a hub for travelers from all across the Forgotten Realms, Baldur's Gate is prone to internal strife and criminal activity. Two orders were established to protect the citizenry and defend the city from threats both without and within. Members of the Watch are often recruited from the Gate's own citizenry and instilled with a sense of honor to defend their home while the mercenary band known as the Flaming Fist acts as an auxiliary fighting force bound only by thin contracts and promises of riches. They're highlighted in the cards Flaming Fist and Flaming Fist Officer. Despite the vigilance of these groups, Baldur's Gate has a well-earned reputation as a center for criminal activity. Several thieves guild agents and other organized bandits trade in blackmail, subterfuge, and assassination. The proximity of the coast and the Gate's own extensive underground network allow for speedy retreats when necessary. Baldur's Gate can be loosely divided into four areas, each representing a specific aspect or quality of city life. The upper city houses the ruling class, the wealthy elite, and various envoys or diplomats from other nations. Here, the wide streets are neatly cobbled, and the finest artisans run corner stores, while the well-to-do purchase treasured items to flaunt their excess. This is seen in the card's beautiful promenade and manor gate. As one works their way down, the streets become narrower and filled with the murmur of bustling activity. The lower city holds the gate's beating heart. Here, commerce flows and society mingles as traders or hawkers peddle their wares. Day laborers seek the comforts of raucous taverns, and daily crafts are made in the forges of industry. As an important entree port, the docks of Baldur's Gate are alive with activity. Countless vessels pass through the city, dropping off goods and adventurers alike. Beyond the city gates exists a sprawl of shanty houses and tenements that mark the outer city. The gates' burgeoning growth couldn't be contained and structures for housing and commerce burst forth to surround much of the palisade. Here, beggars stumble through the outer city's streets and those races seen as dangerous or outsiders by humans form tight-knit communities. Finally, a vast expanse of tunnels and secret passageways crisscrosses beneath the foundations of the city and acts as a haven for crime or subterfuge. The Undercity is a dark and dangerous place, where traps are placed beyond darkened corners and a flash of steel can swiftly end a life. Few know the full extent of the caverns, but the Undercity runs so deep that it connects with the subterranean realm of the Underdark, where untold horrors lurk. The Undercity's peril and promise of reward are highlighted in the initiative mechanic of the set and its accompanying dungeon, where adventurers explore the stinking sewers. 
Much exists beyond the glistening parapets of Baldur's Gate in the western heartlands of Faerun. The famous city of Waterdeep lies to the north along the Sword Coast causeways and stands as the gate's cosmopolitan competitor. Known as the most influential city-state of western Faerun and perhaps the entire continent, it's also called the City of Splendors for its rich culture. To the south lies the impregnable coastal fortress of Candlekeep, which houses the largest collection of scrolls, tomes, artifacts, and theories in all of Faerun. A shining bastion of enlightenment, Candlekeep attracts the most studious of scholars and those mages interested in plumbing the Forgotten Realm's deepest mysteries. The pinnacle of Candlekeep's knowledge is on display in cards like Mindstone and Candlekeep Inspiration. Further inland are the rolling hills that make up the Fields of the Dead, so named for the many battles that transpired against ancient rival kingdoms over the centuries as a highly contested strategic zone. The city of El Torel claimed much land in this region before it was dragged into Avernus, the first layer of the Nine Hells. The cards Descent into Avernus and Ascend from Avernus highlight the tumultuous journey of this famed city. Many other glades, forests, and mountains lie within western Faerun where magical beasts and dangerous adventures await for the most daring of explorers. And beneath all of this, the notorious Underdark resides as a haven for monstrous abominations and terrible races. This expansive subterranean network of caverns extends across much of Faerun, acts as a symbol of evil, and instills fear into all who plumb its depths. Myriad creatures and races dwell within the city walls of Baldur's Gate and exist in the greater multiverse of the Forbidden Realms. The behaviors and characteristics of these beings often fall along a spectrum, divided into quadrants with one axis highlighting the space between good and evil, and the other axis the space between law and chaos. Humans are among the most widespread race on Faerun, inhabiting many different geographies and taking on cultural personalities that mirror their environs. They are often ambitious and self-righteous, believing in their own superiority. Humans hold posts at every social station in Baldur's Gate, from ruling nobility to groveling street urchin. Like humans, the Elves of Forgotten Realms demonstrate significant variability and have several sub-races ranging from the Sylvan Wood Elves to the Ebon-Skinned Dark Elves. Most elves remain in tight-knit communities close to natural forests or wildlands and are deeply in tune with the world around them. But adventure pulls on every soul, and the opportunity Baldur's Gate represents draws many elves to its streets. The nomadic and merry race of halflings, who believe in the strength of kindred bonds and stand undaunted against even the most insurmountable obstacles, can also be found within the city gates, as well as the races of dwarves, known across the realms for their bravery, their martial prowess, and their superior craftsmanship with raw material. Faerun's vast expanse of wilderness is home to many animals, beasts, and creatures of nature. Dryads tend the forests and cultivate arboreal growth. Fairies and bird folk take to the skies. Dugar and goblins inhabit dark mountain caverns, and merfolk slice through undersea currents. Perhaps the most awe-inspiring and majestic of all, and the eponymous creature of D&D, is the dragon. Dragons are the physical representation of the allure of adventure, the promise of great reward, and the raw power of the elements. They guard treasure troves and protect ancient knowledge, attracting adventurers from the far corners of Faerun to seek or otherwise hunt them. Dragons are variable in size and appearance. Some, like the Astral Dragon, come from different planes entirely. A powerful cycle of Elder Dragons can be seen in the cards of ancient dragons in this set. The race of humanoid dragons known as Dragonborn also exist within Faerun, although their exact origins and genealogy are shrouded in mystery. Despite their similar appearance and shared characteristics with dragons, many dragonborn harbor only resentment and hatred towards them, having acted as a slave race of dragons for many years. If their nature and color align, some dragonborn show admiration towards dragons, as seen in the card Ambitious Dragonborn. Terrible creatures and horrifying abominations lurk beyond the safe flicker of candlelight and slink beneath the city streets. The network of caverns, catacombs, and labyrinthine tunnels underneath the surface of Faerun, known as the Underdark, is host to evil beings of nightmare. We see this location illustrated in cards like Explore the Underdark and Evolving Wilds, whose flavor text reads, There's an immense diversity of life in the Underdark, almost all of which can kill you. The race of dark elves called Drow hunt unsuspecting travelers and worship their spider queen Loth from their underground cities. Perhaps the most infamous creatures of the Underdark are the Illithids. Also called Mind Flayers, Illithids are aberrations born from the Far Realms that possess incredible psionic powers and feast on the thoughts and minds of their victims. These creatures contradict the natural order, 
have no place in the multiverse and inspire fear wherever they're found. Their purpose is to expand their dominion beyond the confines of the Underdark, where they were long ago driven, and subjugate all other sentient beings. Mind flares have a chilling reputation of reproduction, infecting humanoid creatures with immature tadpoles that would feast on their mind and transform them into another illithid in a process called seromorphosis. They've mastered celestial navigation and can travel between realms using their nautiloid spelljammer vessels, seen in the art of the card, Nautiloid Ship. The final stage in an illithid life cycle is that of an elder brain, a supremely powerful and intelligent psionic being that acts as a sort of hive mind for the Mind Flare community that protects it. This creature's powers are on display in the card's elder brain and intellect devourer. Other powerful aberrations known as Beholders or Eye Tyrants slink through the Underdark's catacombs, beings of untold mental and mystical fortitude. Several other planes of existence lie beyond the border of the Prime Material, each replete with their own races and creatures that often pierce the veil between worlds and emerge on Faerun. The lower planes represent evil and chaos. These realms are home to the demons, devils, and fiends of the multiverse. They pursue grief and pain with sadistic pleasure tempt mortals with infernal contracts, and set schemes in motion to accrue more personal power. We can see their ways illustrated in cards like Balor and Chain Devil, whose flavor text reads, To these fiends, there's no symphony more beautiful than the melodies of rattling chains and ripping flesh. Tieflings are humanoid descendants of fiends that have retained some of their ancestors' physical characteristics, if not their evil nature. Tieflings are looked upon with suspicion, but their deep emotion and innate cunning makes them skillful leaders. Standing against the fiends are the creatures of the upper planes that represent law and good. Angels, archons, and other celestial beings materialize near Baldur's Gate to vanquish the foul, protect the helpless, and grant boons to worthy souls. We can see their talents on display in the cards Battle Angels of Tyr and Windshaper Planetar. Many other creatures exist within the Prime Material Plane and beyond it that share no particular alignment or affiliation, but rather enrich the greater multiverse, inspire bards to sing tales worthy of their glory in musky inns, and spur adventurers to seek out the truths of their nature. Baldur's Gate, a shining city that represents valor, corruption, mysticism, betrayal, and above all else, opportunity. A city that attracts both the most abhorrent and most pure souls, where danger lurks behind every corner, and whose gates beyond which untold adventures await the party most prepared to tackle them. Thanks so much for watching and listening to this video connecting the Forgotten Realms to the MTG multiverse. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts on Baldur's Gate, which dragon is your favorite, and what race are you most interested in, as well as suggestions for future videos in the comments below. And if you're a fan of Lauren's storytelling, consider subscribing to the channel or checking out the podcast where content is uploaded frequently. Again, a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters who make all of this possible. I couldn't do it without their spectacular patronage. If you're interested in becoming a lore luminary for access to me, a great community, and early video drops, check out the link below or head to patreon.com slash the lorebrarians to learn more. Until next time, go forth and explore the lore.